Today we're going to talk about how to add an additional stepper to the Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.4. Now I need to review a couple of things. We have our X stepper, our Y stepper, our Z stepper, our E0 stepper, and our E1 stepper. What we're going to be adding is our E2 stepper, which I'll talk about in just a moment. But I need to point out a couple of things. I'm going to be using 12 volts in order to do this tutorial for my power supply which is going to be connected here which means that the power output that's going to come out of these is either going to be 12 or 24 volts but seeing how i'm using 12 volts it'll only be 12. so we have a couple of fan connectors or power connectors we have one here one here one here and then one over here that's something that we need to know about the other thing is we need available pins to do this. So in this case, I've chosen EXP1 as the set of pins that we're gonna use to connect to the stepper extender. And I'll show you a little bit about that right now. Okay, now that we understand where the pins are on the SKR version 1.4, we need to know something about our stepper extender. Now, according to their documentation, this is good between 12 and 24 volts. So what we need to know first is where the MS enable switches are. And in this case, they're dip switches. So you're going to have to move this connection over to the right towards on in order to give yourself the fullest degree of step for all three of these. Down below that, or above that in this actual video, this is the connector for our NEMA 17 stepper. And then in the right hand corner, we have our voltage logic for five volts. Then we have our two grounds in the center. And then we have what's labeled as nine volts, but the board obviously can go up to 12 volts without an issue. Then we have our enable pin right here that we need for our stepper to connect it. We also have our direction pin and our ground pin over here. Then finally, we need to know what pins we can use to connect to our SKR version 1.4. So we have our enable pin, our direction pin, and then our step pin. Those are all the things that we need to know before we connect it. Okay, here is a very close up of the DRV8825. I needed to point out a couple of things. If you haven't already seen my video on how to connect this to the SKR, I suggest you watch it because it will fill in some of the details that I may skip. But on top of here, we have what's known as our heat fins. It's covering a chip to wick away the heat. We also have a trim pod over here that's used to calibrate the actual current going through. So think of it as a faucet that controls how much water flows. Here's the underside of the DRV8825. And the important detail that I keep pointing out is the enable pin. And then the ground pin and the direction pin. And the reason that I keep pointing this out is if you connect this backwards to your board so that the pins don't match the enable pin on the board. You will actually do damage to your electronics. So always check these before connecting. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move the jumpers to the correct position over here. So now they're all enabled. Next, I'm going to get the stepper and as you can see the enable pin is located over here and over here so we need to rotate this over to connect this correctly and then we're just going to place a little bit of thumb pressure to put that in place okay I need to review some pins with you real quick here this is from the manual and this is the pinout diagram in here for the SKR version 1.4 and the pins that we need to know about are our fan pins. First of all, you can see that the fan on the left up here corresponds to 12 or 24 volts. 
and then we have a ground pin over here that is the square one. Then we have to go down to EXP1 because we're going to be using pins out of that. That means you cannot use an LCD that uses these set of pins during this part of the tutorial. So as you can see, we have a 5 volt pin that corresponds to here and then a ground pin that corresponds to here and then we have free pins over here that we can use. So those are the ones we're going to focus on. Okay, you're going to have to excuse me on the colors of the wires. Unfortunately, I've run a little bit short on the correct colors, so I'll explain as I'm doing it and pay attention closely. So the first thing that we want to connect is the red wire over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the left-hand pin, which is our 12 volts, to the 9 volt over here. Then I'm going to connect with the small purple wire, which we're going to call our ground, the pin to the right, and then over on the stepper extender, we're going to connect to the left of the voltage pin. Next, we're going to connect the ground pin for EXP1. And we're going to connect to the left of the other ground pin. Then finally, we're going to connect to the voltage wire pin with our jumper. And we're going to connect that for our 5 volt logic, which is right over here. Unfortunately, I can't see super well from this distance. And that's what it's going to look like. So the outer ones are going to be 12 volt on the right and 5 volt on the left. Next, we're going to do our enable pin. So we're going to pick the pin just below the voltage in EXP1. And we're going to jump that to the enable pin or E pin right here. Then we're going to connect what's known as the direction pin. So we're going to use the pin to the right of enable. And we're going to connect to the direction pin with the yellow wire. And then finally, we're going to do the step pin. And we're going to use the pin just below the brown wire in this case. And we're going to connect that to the step pin over here. So now that we've got all the pins sorted out, we need to actually load firmware. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to move the jumper off these two pins and move it over to these two pins so that we can connect via USB. Then I'm going to connect the big side of the USB to our board over here. And I'm going to connect the small side to the computer where you're going to hear a beep. Okay, so the next step, I want to show you first that uh, we need to check to see the USB drive is connected. As you can see, it's got firmware.cur. So that's going to matter in a couple of minutes. but. Uh, as I was doing this tutorial, I realized that uh, just showing you the third extruder might not help you very much when it comes to setting up a diamond print head. So I'm going to show you that part as well and how to connect it in just a second. But let's configure the firmware first and then we'll worry about that. So in order to load the firmware, we're going to click on Explorer. We're going to go to the Open folder. We're going to open up the second unzipped Marlin folder, and then we're going to click Select Folder. Inside here, we have to do several things. So to start with, I'm going to show you how to modify the header file for the Big Tree Touch, but I'll show you that in just a second, and I'll work my way into it. So I'm going to go to the Marlin folder then the source folder, then the core folder, then boards.h. Inside here, I'm going to type Control-F, and I'm going to search on SKR. 
Now the SKR board that I'm using is 1.4. This will work for an SKR 1.3, I believe, but it might be slightly different pin numbers, but don't quote me on that. So I'm gonna copy that and also let you know that down here we have the turbo version. And its default environment is LPC 1769 for its chipset. For ours, it's 1768 in this example. So I'm going to close out of this for a second. I'm going to go over to configuration.h. Now I'm going to do a search on motherboard. And I'm going to replace the ramps motherboard with ours. Then I'm going to go up here and change the serial port to negative one. And now we have to change the steppers. So I'm gonna do a search on A4988 to get us to where we need to be. And I'm gonna enable the X stepper, the Y stepper, the Z stepper. Then I'm gonna do E0, E1, and E2. Now normally I'd walk you through how to set up the stepper down here, but I need to remind you that with a diamond print head, you're going to need to use the same stepper. So it's recommended that you use either an A4988 or a DRV8825 in our case. So because this is a default value, I'm not gonna show you how to set it up, but I'm gonna set it to 1000 for the moment only because I want the actual turning to be either slower or faster, just to emphasize the example. So I'm gonna go up here and explain a little bit about what we need to change for the steppers because we're using a DRV8825. We're gonna copy this, then we're gonna paste it here, here, and here. Now in the example, I'm not actually gonna show you these being connected, but I've made plenty of tutorials for SKR on how to do it. So I suggest you watch them. I'll leave a link in the description. So now that we're set with that, I have to go over to the source folder again. Then I need to go over to pins. And we're working on the LPC 1768, so we need to go in there. And we need to find our board, which is the Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.4. Inside here, this outlines all the pins that we are currently using. Now we need to make a change to our steppers, which are right here. Because we don't have a third stepper for our extruder being E2, what we're gonna do is cheat. So we're gonna copy this whole fragment right here and then we're going to paste it right here to give us that additional stepper. Then we're going to renumber these E2, 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 and E2. And then also for chip select, we'll do E2. Now we're not currently using chip select. This would be something for like the TMC2130. But we are going to give it a number just in case. So to do the numeration of these, I need to go over and actually look at the pinout diagram again. And so what we did was we connected these three pins. So I need to look over on my device and find the very first one, which is the extruder and the pin color, and then trace that back to the board. And that one was actually 23, so 1.23. So we're going to go back and we're going to change the enable pin so it's p1 and we're going to change that to 23 then we're going to do the direction pin which is located in the middle for the wire that we connected so that one is the pin located right over here being 22 so we're gonna go back and change direction to 22. And then finally, we're gonna look up the stepper pin. And the stepper pin, we're gonna trace back to the pin 21. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna change the step pin to 21. 
That's all we need to do for our enable step endure. But for good practice, I'm gonna show you how to do this one. Chip select in this case obviously is not being used and you can't really use a TMC2130 without a lot more pins being connected. So we're gonna skip that for now, but I'll show you what pin I'm gonna give it. So we're gonna go back over to the diagram and we have an unused pin being 20. So for EXP1, we'll use that. So I'm gonna change this to 20. Notice how it's one dot for the actual number for the EXP pin right here. That actually translates into one underscore 20 or P1 underscore 20. So now that we're all set with that, we have to actually go back to the Marlin firmware and make some more mods. So I'm gonna go to the top of the file for configuration.h and I need to show you how to set up an actual diamond print head. So if we scroll down through here, there's a couple of options that we need to look for. And one of those is extruders. Now, currently we have it defaulted to one because that's what most people use. But in this case, we're gonna be doing a diamond print head where we're, we're gonna using all of the steppers being E0, E1, and E2. So we're gonna set that to three. Next, we need to go and say that it has a single nozzle. So we have to remove the comment over here. That will allow us to use a diamond print head. And so we're all set with that. Now, the other thing I wanna change that you don't normally need to change is cold extrusion. So I'm gonna search on that. So I'm gonna search on cold. And what we have here is a minimum temperature. Normally you will not change this. This is just for testing. So I'm gonna change it to 10 degrees or better yet, I'm gonna do zero degrees Celsius. So we don't have to do any G codes to test it. So we're all set there. Now we need to go to platformio.ini. And like I said earlier, we need to change our chipset because this is for the ramps. So we're gonna change it to LPC1768. That will point to our chipset that we're using for our SKR version 1.4. So now that we're all set there, there's two buttons here. One is just build, which is also known as compile. And then we have upload, which does a builder compile and then uploads to our SKR version 1.4. So I'm gonna click that to send it to our board after it's finished compiling. Okay, now that the compilation is completed and is successful, it took about four minutes and four seconds. As you can see, it's successful for our chipset. So I'm gonna click on the USB drive and sure enough, we have our firmware.bin. So I'm gonna show you how to load that real quick. I'm just going to remove the USB, then reconnect it, and this will load the firmware via USB power or 5 volts. Then we should get a pop-up in a second saying that the firmware has updated, and this will show us what our configuration is. So I'm going to click over here, and I'm going to click on the drive. And as you can see, it says firmware.cur, and it's just now. So the next step is to actually connect the diamond print head, and I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, to connect the diamond print head, it already comes pre-assembled in my case, so I'll leave a link in the description as an affiliate link. And just to let you know, no one is paying me or sponsoring me to do this tutorial but I will be placing Amazon affiliate links in the description for your convenience. So we have fan zero and then we have fan one. This one's gonna be continuous power for 12 volts. So I'm gonna connect that right there. The next thing that I wanna do is actually connect the extruder. But for safety's sake, I'm gonna take out this and I'm also gonna move the jumper over 
for direct power in a few minutes. So with the extruder, we don't have to worry about the actual temperature, but we do have to worry about which connection we're using. So I'm using the zero position connector. So positive and negative is not an issue here. So I'm gonna connect the first side. And notice how I put actual ferrules on this for safety. That keeps the wires from getting crossed by accident. And I'll leave a link in the description to where you can find ferrules, but they're usually kits. So you're gonna to have to figure out which one you can clamp on. So we're all set with that now for the actual diamond print head, but we have one last thing that we need to connect, and that's the thermistor. Now the thermistor is a glass bead inside a wire that basically the resistance of it allows us to know how the actual temperature is based on how fast it passes through the circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect that and that's going to be the center one right here for the first extruder and I'm going to clip that right in there. So we're all set for our configuration. We have the fan set up right here. You can see that hopefully. Now we're not actually gonna fire it up with any temperature because this is more an example for the stepper over here and for the motor. So we're gonna go over to Pronerface in just a moment, but first I need to connect actual power to this board. And if you haven't already noticed, I have the power actually disconnected off to the side while I'm working on it. So that's going to remain disconnected while I connect this. So I'm going to grab my screwdriver and notice how I put the ferrules on this as well for safety. I'm going to unscrew these so that they open up and then I'm going to place them in according to the colors. Now this is ground and this is power. I marked them with red so it's easier to read for me and for you. So I'm going to screw that down and I'm going to screw down the other one over here. Okay, so we're all set with that now. Now I'm going to energize the system. So I'm going to connect this first because there's no power going through it at the moment. And I'm going to connect the power to the wall, which is 12 volts, by the way. So as you can see, the fan goes on automatically because it's getting direct current. If we had wanted to adjust the fan speed, we'd use the fan port above it. But in this case, you always want it on when you're actually extruding. So let's move over to Pronerface now. Okay, for convenience, I opened up the print run directory so I could just open up Pronerface for you. So I'm gonna open up the executable. I'm gonna click on connect. As you can see, this printer is now online. One of the problems, though, is that we only have one extruder to extrude. So this is how we're going to fix it. We're going to click Disconnect. We're going to go to Settings, Options. And in Options, we're going to change the extruder count to 3. Then click OK. Close it. Now we're going to reopen it. And as you can see now, we have tools over here. So I'm going to click connect and see what we have. So it says that we have three different extruders. We have extruder E0, E1, and E2. We're interested in E2, which is our third extruder. So I'm going to select that. Now to test it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on extrude and see what happens. So as you can see, it's now moving. So a couple of things that uh, users have requested that I've taken care of now. I've actually added a Patreon for those that are interested. I also added a Discord that you can find in my uh, profile. And if there's anything else that you can think of that I need to improve on, let me know. And I want to take a moment to thank you for watching the tutorial and have a nice day.